no, no, no. I, I, I gotta do it. Okay, like I know other people have made videos talking about this video, but I, it's, it's gotta be done. I, I gotta get my own take out. Um. All right, bruh. Takes away. There you are, playing the PvP in your World War II shooter, and all of a sudden, you're a Nazi. You didn't ask for this. You didn't choose this. Yet there it is. All of a sudden, you say? But, but did, did you not read the, the back of the box that explains the plot? Did you not look at the front cover, which usually has the characters that will be involved in, in, in the story? I mean, I mean, you know, Call of Duty, they usually just have, like, one guy. You know what I mean? Like, you know, or just some guy in camo. You know, maybe, maybe you couldn't figure it out. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe you just didn't have the mental capacity to go look up a video game review or look up some footage of the game before you bought it. So, you just, you're just so totally shocked and surprised. All of a sudden, you became a Nazi. You had no idea that this was even a function in the game that you bought. Which, honestly, at that point would be more your fault than the game developer's fault. Because if you're just throwing out money to go buy games, well, Brad, you can't really can't really be upset when you find some shit you don't like. And it's treated no differently than playing a British soldier. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would have to imagine that one, these are fictional creations of our own mind. They don't exist. They're just data or avatars used to represent a fictional environment and setting that didn't actually happen. I mean, World War II happened, but the battle where you're stuck in a fucking box with invisible walls that you can't escape. That never happened. That's not a thing. I mean, it's not real. So, like, why? Of course it's treated as the same thing. It's a video game. It's not It's not real. Did you Did you, Did you? you forget that? Did, did, did you miss the part where it's not real? This is bad on so many levels. No one should ever have a random chance of fighting for the Nazis. Because? Oh, I know why. It's because Nazis are the greatest evil that ever eviled. It's not fair if you have to play as the evilest of all evil that ever eviled in the world. I mean, even Sauron can't hold a candle to how evil the Nazis were. They're the evilest of the evil, so obviously there should never you, you shouldn't have to be forced to play as like super evil people, even though their entire video game is predated upon that entire idea. I mean, I could go on and list them off the top of my head, but I, I really don't feel like it. The Force Unleashed. I mean, maybe Galen Malik becomes a good guy later, but he got Overlord. I mean, he's got other games I could probably think of. God of War. Yeah. Not God of War 4, but like the first three God of War games, you were pretty much the, the main antagonist that did a lot of heinous things. Was, isn't there a game called Hatred? You know, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I couldn't even stop myself from doing it. I couldn't even stop myself from naming off video games where you play as the antagonist. Uh, what is it? Um, Prototype. Even Infamous gives you the option of being a bad guy, you know, um, not Second Son. I think, it, no, Second Son, I think they also had the morality system. I'm over here actually thinking about games. Look at how different your video is to mine, where I'm actually stop and thinking critically about video games and how you have the option to play as an evil character, like, consistently in lots of different video game titles, but for some odd reason the Nazis are the special category of, of, of not evil because of the evilest evil that ever eviled. I mean, I don't, what even is the point here? You know, I cut you off. I'm, I'm sorry. Go on. And we should never express that there's no meaningful difference between Nazis and Allied soldiers, or that they're functionally interchangeable. Yeah, you see, my friend, here's the problem. You, you make the assumption that I don't have, like, a functioning brain. Like, you make this assumption that I can't, you know, do this thing called think for myself, where I'm able to recognize patterns and come to conclusions based on those patterns and historical facts that occurred. Um, but, but to give you some, some solace, my friend, to, to help you out here, to, get, to give you some peace of mind, um, I can do that. And to help you out even more, I, I can reckon that a lot of other people can also do that. So, you don't have to worry about that too much, that we can't figure out that there's a difference between the British allies and, and the Nazis, you know. And before anyone equivocates and says not all German soldiers in World War II were Nazis, if they were wearing the swastika and are functioning as an arm of the Nazi government, then unless the game goes out of its way to tell you specifically that your particular character is not a Nazi, then they're a Nazi. In that multiplayer shooter, when it switched you to the German side, did it go out of its way to tell you that the person you're playing was pressed into service under threat of their life? Yeah, that's a big old nope. Oh, and on a similar note, let's please stop forcing people to play as terrorists as well. There you are, playing your modern shooter, and all of a sudden you're a terrorist. 
You didn't ask for this, you didn't choose this, and yet second verse, same as the first, there it is. I mean, you know, all sarcasm aside, your point here is just kind of st <sighs> stupid, it's just easy to say, okay? But your point here is just very illogical, okay? If it's a co-op game that's team-based, then you have to have an antagonist somewhere. And is it tacky or unfair to use real-life villains or real-life people that did heinous things in a video game? That's a conversation unto itself, okay? And it goes well beyond the scope of this video. If you want my shorthand answer, I would say, yeah, of course it is. But, you know, I mean, there's a case to be made. Um, there's an argument to be had. I, I get that. Not today's video, but I could get that argument. What I don't understand is this idea that you can't have a random number generator place you on one team and put the other people on a different fucking team. Because that's all it is. And here's the thing. Being placed on a team, temporarily called the terrorist, does not make you a bloody terrorist in real life. I, I mean, it, it's... It, do I even have... Why do I even have to explain... Why do I even have to say those words in that fucking sentence? I mean, that's literally the name of your side in the game. We can do better than this. Even if you put aside all of the people who have had traumatic experiences with these groups, who have lost loved ones to terrorists, or who have had generations of their families wiped out by Nazis, no one should have to put on the costume of an ideology they find abhorrent without actually opting into it in your game. Now, I'm um, pause here again to say, this is, a, this is an interesting conversation to be had. This is a fair conversation to be had. Again, I would say that no matter how you slice it, a uh, fictional representation of something is fictional and um it, it don't real so there's no real effect on any real person um unless it is a modern retelling of specific events that occurred that are trying to manipulate people and then the issue would be the manipulation not the fact that the story is being told um there's lots of different contexts and nuance in that conversation and it's interesting to have i have to admit it would be interesting is it fair to use like actual heinous people in different video game settings because it might be rude to the people who are still alive or have been affected the only problem is and it might be seem like i'm pausing for dramatic pause but i'm really not like i'm really i'm really trying to find the strength to finish the sentence but in this particular Call of Duty games or any personal shooter games, it's just it's just fucking organizing teams. It's not some deep metaphysical tale or retrospective, you know, or diatribe or, or any kind of theme or point they're trying to suggest apart from kill those guys, kill those guys. It's just a video game. It's, it begins and ends there. There's nothing deep or introspective about it. They need bad guys. They need good guys. Done. That's it. That, it begins and ends there. So, I mean, the idea of saying that it's not fair that you get put on the team of terrorists because someone you never met has been affected by terrorism is just silly. One, you have no responsibility to people that you've never met before. And two, it's not real and it's not actually reflective of any real terrorist that probably does exist. And three, it's a fucking video game and, and you're, just, you're just playing it for fun. You're not trying to have any political discussion about it. If you want to have a political discussion about it, then you would leave the video games out of it because they don't real. No one should have to put on the costume of an ideology they find abhorrent without actually opting into it in your game. So, you know what? That's kind of a fair point. Only so far as, if you don't want to play on the team of Nazis, should the game random number generate you on the team of Nazis? You know what? That's a question for game developers. I mean, personally, again, like it, it really doesn't matter to me because it's a video game, we're just supposed to have fun. But you know what? Fine, fine. If you want an option or you want a team choosing option in your video game, I'm, I'm not really going to argue against you. I just don't really think it's enough to make like a moral crusade about it. The only problem is that's not the point that you're making in this video. In fact, you're making a far, a far more sinister and, and kind of arrogant and disgusting point that you're about to get into. Continue. And by making people do so, we get them to stop thinking about it. To stop thinking of the meaning behind these things. We normalize them. We make them just window dressing for entertainment. Those uniforms, those symbols, become things that no longer inherently revolt us. They reduce our visceral reaction to seeing the embodiment of these ideologies. Now, does this make us totally ignore the history that comes with them? No. But for some people, it moves them from the territory of revolting to just edgy. It makes scrawling a swastika on something change from unthinkable to just dangerous. 
it means you might not take iron crosses all over a website as a warning sign that you should immediately leave. And if you don't leave, you might start reading and buying into hateful ideas there. Now, this is why I despise this video. It, it's not even the fact that he's pol politicizing video games. I, I don't really care about all that. Um, but it's the fact that he takes this position of arrogance beyond arrogance. Uh, uh, he's, he's moral flexing so hard that, <laughs> that it just reaches upon the point of absurdity. His argument here is to say that if we include Nazi paraphernalia or any type of edgy paraphernalia in any video game, it becomes normalized. And at that point, people stop having a visceral negative reaction to it. And instead, they just don't like it. And the problem there is it will lead to people going on different websites and reading these different ideologies from, I guess, neo-Nazis he's probably thinking of, or any like white nationalists, maybe that's what he's trying to allude to, or any nasty ideology that someone might be putting up. That we'll go and we'll read those, and we might start buying into it because we're no longer think that Nazis are nasty because we've seen them all over the place. Now, of course, I'm pretty sure anyone that has a brain and can think for all of 13 seconds, probably less than that, can realize what the issue here is. The issue is that he's making the assumption that we can't think for ourselves. He's making the assumption that we can't come to rational, reasonable conclusions by ourselves. And that because we've been bombarded with a whole bunch of different Nazi stuff, all of a sudden now we are more beholden or more accepting of what they did. And that's just absurd. It's just unreasonable. Most people have probably never even fucking met a Jewish person, number one. Number two, most people probably will never even begin to hate Jewish people. That's number two. And number three, most people probably never in their right fucking mind are ever going to think, especially in America of all places, that we need to round up all the Jewish people and then fucking kick them out. And if those then Jewish people refuse to leave after we attempt to kick them out, we try to hold them in concentration camps. No one is going to think that that makes sense because there's not even a fucking political landscape where that ideology is reasonable, especially in fucking America. And you could realize that if you had all of three brain cells, maybe two, I think, I think you can get away with that thought process if you had one brain cell that was on its last fucking deathbed, like it's about to die in the next three seconds, and you could still say, hold on, wait a minute, America is not Germany, and we're not even in that political climate that, climate that even created the Nazi regime in the first place, so there's no reason for us to be upset about it. But see, again, the video is, is making the assumption, or a narrator at least, is making the assumption that we can't think for ourselves, and that is why I disrespect it. That is why I hate this shit without... without with, uh, this is why this video is so frustrating for me. It, it, it's honestly, it's such a whack moral flex that he thinks that he's the only fucking human being in the world that's so morally uprighteous, that's so morally fucking steadfast and so morally and just so intelligent that he's the only person who can see that the Nazis are evil people. He's the only one who can see that the Nazis are the evil of the evil. And if we put them in video games, people are no longer going to see Nazis are the evil of the evil. They're the evilest evil they're ever evil. And they might actually start being swayed by them. He thinks that he is one of the few people that cannot be swayed. That but everyone else is just but a sheep and, and just a sheep playing a video game and they just get bombarded with Nazi paraphernalia and now they think, hey, you know what? It might be okay to become a Nazi. Hmm, you know, maybe maybe we should get rid of all them Jews. And yes, I've never even seen a Jew, but I should probably get rid of them now. I probably shouldn't have used that accent. I probably should have tried to at least attempt to do a German accent. But I've never attempted one, so I didn't think that it would be, I, I wouldn't be good at it. Continue. It seems like such a small and simple thing. But it's things like this that erode our safeguards against dangers we sacrifice so much to fight. By the time you've played a hundred hours of being a Nazi, their voice stabs become memes and in-jokes with your friends. By the thousandth time you've respawned as a terrorist, you're either celebrating them or making fun of them. Brother. If you're making fun of terrorists, then you're not celebrating them. You're mocking them for their silliness. And if you play as a terrorist for the thousandth time, I don't see why you would logically come to the conclusion then that terrorism is an okay thing to do. Especially if there's no story or no ideology apart from here, wear this costume, here, wear this costume. Like in team-based fucking games where you're fighting, 
like even Overwatch doesn't like have a campaign mode. You know, Call of Duty has a campaign mode, but you're always the good guy firing and killing the bad guys. You're always killing terrorists. And in co-op versus mode, someone has to be the antagonist because it's player versus player. That's just that's just how we're just talking about how the fucking game functions at this point. And if we're talking about how the game functions, brother, then you're not being baked in terrorist or Nazi ideology. You're just wearing the costume temporarily so you guys just have an even team of players to fight against. The video game isn't trying to convince you that being a Nazi or being a terrorist is okay. It's just putting you in a costume so you can play the game. Why does that even need to be explained? And then more importantly than that, again, you're making the assumption that people can't think for all of 13 seconds and say, hey, maybe it's not a good idea to blow up a building full of innocent people. And if they play a video game too much, they might start thinking that it's totally fine to just gun down innocent people in the streets. No. No, people, normal people don't think like that. Normal people don't come to those conclusions. And the fact that you even think that this is even possible, that playing a fucking video game is going to get you to a point where you think it's okay to just start gunning down people, it's just, it's beyond absurd. It's so, it's so stupid. Neither of which helps the global crisis we have that takes thousands of lives every year. So what do we do? That's easy. Don't make them morally equivalent. Don't make there be no in-game moral difference between your Nazis and your allies, between your terrorists and your counter-terrorist squads. Frame PvP as a training exercise, or simply take one of your non-odious sides and recolor them so that it's red versus blue, rather than Axis versus allies. What are we? Are we but babes? Are we but sheep who lack the capacity to think critically? Is that what we are? That now we have to censor Nazis because they might hurt feelings? We gotta do, it's gotta be red versus blue, guys, because it might hurt people's feelings if we play as Nazis. People, people are gonna get offended. Their feelings are gonna get hurt, guys. So we gotta make the teams purple and gray. We should just make everyone gray. You know what? How about, instead of having teams and versus and guys shooting each other, they just hug each other. They're all just gray blobs and you run around the map and the person who gets the most hugs, they win. That's how you that's how we play team. It's not team deathmatch. No, no, no. It's team hug match. You know, because you guys can't think for yourselves. You guys can't think critically about the world and the video games that you play. You know, you guys are but mindless sheep who are gonna be swayed into these nasty ideologies. So so don't worry about that. I'm gonna help you guys out. No, we're just I'm gonna make Hug Master nine thousand and, and we're just gonna go around, we're just gonna hug each other, we're just gonna love each other. How about that? Is that what you fucking want? I, I, okay, fine. I know this is reductio ad certum. I, I, I am making fun of him, but seriously, he's honestly saying that we should start making teams red and blue or framing them as training exercises so we don't think that the bad guys are bad guys. Okay. And look, we're not saying we can't have games about World War II or about terrorism. We're not even saying we shouldn't make games where you play as a Nazi or a terrorist. But what we are saying is that the fact that you're playing as a Nazi or a terrorist in a game has to mean something. And it can't just be a skin. It can't be something that a game randomly drops you into. And really, if we are saying anything in this episode, it's this. Games can do better. And in this particular case, it's not even that hard to do better. And it's no more costly to do better. All it requires is that we in the game industry be cognizant of the world around us. How ironic. This guy is asking us to be cognizant of the world around us, but he doesn't even realize that people have the capacity to think critically for themselves and come to their own conclusions. I mean, just, you know, you can't make this stuff up, man. You can't make this stuff up. All right, I think, I think that's enough. Final, final, final thought. Listen, I'm not saying that media can't have an effect on you. Um... Because to be honest with you, uh, Spider-Man is probably one of the greatest influences on me, like of all time. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero of all time. It, you know, um, Spider-Man has had a really profound and honestly positive effect on me, in, in lots of different ways. In lots of different ways, I can make a whole video about how Spider-Man is a godsend to my life. I really could. I'm not going to, but I could. I'm not saying that video games. And even TV shows and, and, and books and all, I can't, I'm not saying that they don't have an effect on you, but, but here's the thing. The reason why Spider-Man has had such a profound effect on me is because I have thought about the character and the themes he represents 
and what makes him so great and what he means to me. It's it's literally because I can think for myself that I appreciate Spider-Man so much more and I incorporate the themes that he exhibits and, and the, the willpower that he has into myself. That's why. It's because I can think. Not in spite of it, because of it. Which means where I see parts of my life reflected in Peter Parker and his ability to persevere through it, through his moral steadfastness and integrity. I'm never going to look at a Nazi and see where I hate Jewish people and want them to leave my country before I finally start rounding them up and then killing them. You, you get the point that I'm making here, friend? What I'm saying here is that media has an effect on you if you want it to have an effect on you. It doesn't matter how many times someone sits me down in a room, puts on a video about how Satanism is the greatest religion ever, how if I became a Satanist, all of my wildest dreams and fantasies will come true. There will never be a day where I say, you know what, I'm going to become a Satanist. You got me, brother. The most intelligent human being of all time could come up to me and read me a book Aleister Crowley himself wrote. And read all of the, the, the book of magic and, and, and the book of Satanism and, and, and Tongue of A. They can do this to me every day for a fucking decade. And there will never be a point. There, it will never come. It will never happen. There will never be a moment where I'm like, yes, I will become a Satanist. That's a great fucking fantastic idea. And the reason why that moment will never happen is because I can fucking think for myself. And I have... Enough respect for all of us to at least begin to assume that you're not so much of a fucking sheep that if you play a video game that has a Nazi in it, you're going to end up becoming a Nazi. Are, are you so arrogant? Are you so arrogant as to honestly believe that just playing a game that has Nazis and terrorists in them is going to start making people actually think, you know what, man, those Nazi guys were actually kind of cool. No. Even, do you honestly think that at any point in time people are just going to become ambivalent to Nazis and just be like, nah, nah, fuck, nah. no. Nazis have been codified as the greatest evil our world has ever seen. Which is, is unreasonable to me, if I'm going to be totally honest with you. They're heinous, they're evil, certainly, and hell, even me saying that, even me saying that I don't think that Nazis are the greatest evil in the world, even that alone is enough for people to be like, oh, well, you're a holocaust, oh, not oh, oh, wow, you, you think Nazis are fine, like, like, even if I say over and over again, clearly Nazis are evil, clearly no one's gonna fucking agree with them, clearly anyone that even is a neo-Nazi is an absurd thinker that doesn't even, honestly, just, it, the, the thought process is just so fucking beyond me, it makes no sense. Even if I say all of that, me just saying that I don't think Nazis were the greatest evil that ever eviled is enough to get the programming in people's minds to just fire off and just, just, just go out of control and out of whack. Like, let's take stock, shall we? No one ever talks about Joseph Stalin. Yeah. The, Millions of people he killed and hell I didn't even know there was an Armenian genocide until I started going on the internet I didn't even know the Armenian genocide fucking happened until I, I went on the internet and someone mentioned it in passing That's how little we talk about the fucking Armenian genocide But we all know what a Nazi is because we all have codified it in our society as the greatest evil force that ever evil in the history of evil and even saying that there are worse people, or even saying that you don't even think that they are the worst, especially if you look at antiquity, especially if you look at how people acted long before World War II, long before modernity, like, if you even say it, people lose their fucking minds. That's how deep the programming is on how evil Nazis are. There's never going to be a point, at least I don't think in our modern society, where we're ever going to get to a point where we're fine or okay with Nazis. That's just number one. And number two, if we're not just going to over here and pretend that Nazis are the greatest evil ever, number two, we can think for ourselves, man. We all have that fucking capacity. We can all think for ourselves. And if you honestly think that people can't do that, you're just either remarkably arrogant or just beyond stupid. With that being said, I should have you guys got something out of today's video. And if you did, man, go ahead and click the like button. Shoot, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment in the comment box below. As always, you have yourselves a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.